bet you're wondering how a nice young fellow like me got such gray hair. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly how that happened. When I was a kid, I was fascinated with dice. In fact, I think it was dice that drew me to games like Parcheesi and Monopoly and those other board games. I loved dice. My dad knew that. And on one of his business trips, he brought me home a beautiful die and this beautiful box. I kept it on my shelf in my bedroom. I treasured it. Every year in our little town, the first weekend of August, we had a carnival, the Fireman's Carnival. It started at supper time on Friday night and went until late Sunday evening. It was a big deal. The proceeds went to support our volunteer fire department. And for kids, it was an absolute great weekend. In 1957, there was a lot for a 10-year-old boy to do at the Fireman's Carnival. For 10 cents you could get a bottle of pop and a candy bar cost only a nickel. Three balls for a dime at the dunking machine. And bingo was only a nickel a card. I remember we used corn to cover the numbers. And I can still hear that bingo caller say, bingo closed, one winner, one dollar. Rides like the merry-go-round and the Ferris wheel cost 10 cents, and the more exotic ones like the tilt-a-whirl and the roller coaster were all of 15 cents. So my $5 allowance went a long way at the Fireman's Carnival. By far, the most expensive thing at the Carnival was a gambling game called Beat the Dealer. It used dice. And on that Friday evening, in August of 1957, it was a game I decided I needed to play. Here's the way the game was played. The dealer rolled a pair of dice and got a number. Then you put a quarter on the table and rolled your dice. If your number beat the dealer's, you won the quarter. But if the dealer beat you, you lost a quarter. As a 10-year-old boy, I had no idea of the significance of the words written across the front of the table which said, Dealer wins all ties. It took about 25 minutes and my five dollars was gone. When I told my dad what had happened, he informed me that my carnival for 1957 was over. I would spend the rest of Friday and all day Saturday and Sunday at home. I was crestfallen, and I cried myself to sleep. Now, everything I have told you up to this point is absolutely true. As for the rest of the story, you'll have to decide for yourself how much is fact and how much is, shall we say, fantasy. That night, I had a dream. In my dream, I was playing Beat the Dealer, and I was losing. In fact, I'd lost all my money, but I tried to sneak another hand in. And when I lost that one too, and had no money to pay the dealer, he became very angry. He threw a tarp over his table, grabbed me by the arm, and dragged me off to his rusty old Volkswagen van. He drove me to an old, dilapidated building that I didn't recognize. And once inside, he informed me we would play a game for my freedom. With that, he produced my box and my die. And then he produced another die. Here's the way the game's played, son. He said, he said, I'm going to place my die into the box secretly. One number will face the top. You will roll your die. As long as your die does not match mine, you're safe. 
But if at any time your God matches mine, I'll kill you. Three safe rolls, and you're free. And with that, he placed his die into the box. I took my first roll, a five. No match. Again, he secretly placed the die in the box. Again, I roll a three. Again, no match. One more safe roll and I would be free. One last time he placed the die in the box. One last time I roll. A one. He was just about to reveal his number when I heard my mother's voice. Doug, Doug, time to get up for breakfast. I awoke with a start. That had been some nightmare for a 10-year-old boy. And yet, I was curious. I looked at my shelf. The box sat there. And I wondered, what number had I left on the top of the die the last time I'd put it away? In my dream, I'd rolled a one. I went to the shelf, took down the box, and when I removed the lid, my hair turned gray on the spot. And to this very day, no matter whether I'm playing Yahtzee or shooting craps, I can't help but look over my shoulder. The man in the rusty old Volkswagen van. Thank you very much.